Um, hi, my name is Aaron, um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, how to control, manipulate, and create fire with your sheer thought or with your body. Um, so, if you uh, if you're into uh, mythology or uh, or basically any sort of line with a fictional group of awesome people throughout history, there's usually, especially in polytheist religions, you know, where you have the soap opera line of gods, there's usually someone at least associated with the idea of manipulating or controlling uh, some sort of form of, of fire or heat, at least uh, be that a song god or something else. And uh, the same way as in contemporary fiction, in mostly in any imagined universe, be that uh, comic books or video games or, or, or television series where you feature a gang of supernatural people, you do uh, end up at least with a fire dude. Uh, be that with the uh, Fantastic Four has the flame, the, what is it? Human Torch. Human Torch, there you go. Uh, Oh, or Pyro in the X Men, or the whole uh, the Last Airband Airbenders has a whole tribe to basically base around their whole identity about hanging around and creating fire. Uh, but in the real life, it's a bit more complicated. And although there are certain things that we can do with fire that has been proven to be kind of safe, be that uh, firewall sort of breathing fire, which is more like uh, you exhale sort of fume and a flame and then it lights up, great for uh, Javanese rituals and black metal shows. Uh, but other than that, there are several few instances where people were reported to have this amazing skill. Um, one of the first one and most notable one is from about uh, in the 1880s in this uh, town called Pow Pow, Michigan. Uh, there was a 27-year-old Afro-American man reported by the name of, and I will look at my notes now, uh, A. William Underwood, who, uh, who would perform a trick for about uh, 25 cents at the time, which was great money. Uh, he would ask for a handkerchief and would take it, rub it against, uh, between his palms and just like my notes that I'm doing right now, and on his teeth, and then when he would breathe, this uh, this piece of handkerchief, although these are my notes, would catch on fire. And uh, everyone was amazed by it. The whole state of Michigan's uh, scientific community fled to see this amazing person, and they conducted tests with him that they would wake him up in the middle of the night, uh, drag him out, wash him, uh, ask him to take a glass of water, spit it out, clean him, and then he would still be able to perform this trick. And everyone was amazed, and it was quite good money at the time. I mean, for a 27-year-old Afro-American man earning 25 cents to do this trick, it's bloody amazing money. So, uh, so at the end, well, later on, they, the explanation sort of goes in the way that he probably had a piece of phosphorus in his mouth, like something up here at his gum. Gum, um, that he would somehow spit into the whole thing, but then again, uh, because phosphorus up to tension, it lights up about 30 degrees Celsius it needs, and then it catches on fire. Uh, but then you would think that this guy, then, in, then he had to hang around with a piece of phosphorus in his mouth 24-7, just in case someone comes and asks for this trick, which is, doesn't really worth this money to be uh, on any level. Um, strangely enough, his myth was then sort of forgotten and he had a renaissance in the 1970s where uh, Brian Eno released his first album and he did, uh, did dedicate a song to him called uh, The Pow Pow uh, Negro Blowtorch. <laughs> Although the only the song references his the song, the rest of the song doesn't really make much sense, but then again, this is 1970s glam rock Brian Eno we're talking about here, so a lot of many things did have to make sense back then. Uh, so other instances do include in around 1980, uh, the same year actually when this 
Stephen King book was released, uh, an Italian boy was reported that things would light up on fire when he would look at it or around him. Uh, later on, he was sort of exercised by a parapsychologist, and then now he supposedly lives a completely normal life. And then the latest news is around 2011, when a three-year-old Filipino girl would light up things by staring at them and saying their names. So I would say, fire out of tune piano. And then this piano would light up, uh, which got the town so panicked, including the mayor and the chief police, that there was a fire truck constantly stationed next to their house uh, in case something happens. The parents also suffered some serious sleep deprivation because of the media attention they got. Uh, but apart from these stories, there's not much actually to have. So how to do this in practice? Well, um, one of the things, how to control fire with your thought. I mean, obviously there are some people here from the art science department and from the heat care side of this planet. So you can also say that if you want to control fire with your thought, there is a sort of techie way to pull it off, actually, meaning that if you have some sensors here, detecting your brain waves, you can connect that to the computer, which then connects to an uh, ignition device, right? That somehow would do a spark and then shit would fire up, or have, uh, or release some gases or substances that do catch fire when it comes to oxygen, like silane and rubidium. <laughs> These are the two words I needed to memorize for this lecture, by the way. Uh, couldn't pull it off. So, unless that happens, of course you can take the magical way of doing it, but it's a bit more complicated. And things differ on this. Either some people say that you're born with this stuff, or being pyrokinetic, or pyrotelekinetic, um, which is follows the X-Men idea of you're just genetically born with this great ability. But there's ways to learn it, and the internet is full of this. <laughs> How to learn this stuff. Uh, a lot of in the Wiccan community, so the modern witch community, uh, picks up on this. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. That's also great. <laughs> but, you do, but you do have uh, this community having absolutely casual conversations and noted firebenders talking about this stuff as their grocery things. Uh, a lot of things related to Psi and Qi energy and uh, and you can basically learn on the internet supposedly with no videos demonstrated <laughs> how to either make candles dance from the simplest one to turn yourself into a human jetpack and there's people <laughs> having a form conversations on this to how to ignite yourself and fly from one place to the other. So it's, I tried some of them, I don't have much success with it. Uh, but if you would ever do it, please be careful and maybe start defrosting a, you know, pack of spinach. Frost on the windscreen of a car before doing anything more serious. Questions. Would you like to have it yourself? And if you would, would you, how would you use it? Would I like to have the ability to light up? Sure, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> that was a question. Yes, it was. How would yeah. you use it? How would you use it? How would you use it? Well, I would use it to uh, break the ice at parties. <laughs> win, win, win in Monopoly. When I feel like I'm losing it, I could just light up the whole board on fire and walk away peacefully. And uh, restore more peace. I guess these three basic things are. <laughs>